Hello and welcome to this video about enzymes and specifically the enzymes that are involved in the digestion process. So first of all a little bit about what enzymes are. They are what we call biological catalysts. Um, you would have heard of catalysts a lot in chemistry, things that speed up reactions without being used up in reactions and essentially enzymes are just catalysts in living things. Um, they are not themselves living, they are just proteins um, with a very specific shape um, and they break down, in the case of enzymes in digestion, they break down large food molecules into small ones. So each enzyme will work on a specific food type. Just like in chemistry, um, catalysts are very specific to the reaction. So they have a particular shape. Um, and they will fit a particular substrate and that substrate will fit exactly. So this over here could be um, a carbohydrate or a protein or a fat that needs to be broken down and this is the enzyme that will help to speed up that process of breaking down that large food molecule. This is the active site of the enzyme. This is where the substrate will fit in and what happens is the substrate comes, it binds um, to the enzyme and then it can come away in smaller pieces. Um, similarly, you could have a, an enzyme that causes two smaller things to come together to make a larger molecule. Um, but in the case of digestion, we're breaking down large food molecules into small ones. Now enzymes are very fussy, they like particular um, pH for their conditions and they like particular temperatures for their conditions. Um, they work best at body temperature, um, luckily enough, at around 37 degrees C. Um, anything over 40 degrees C and they start to um, change shape. We call it denature. It's really important that you can't say die because the enzymes themselves aren't living in the first place, they're just um, proteins so if you write that they die at high temperatures in your exam you won't get the mark you have to write denature and by denaturing you'll just cause the active site to change shape so that it will no longer fit perfectly that substrate into the active site anymore and it just won't work so temperature is really important for enzyme activity we go on to the enzymes that evolved in digestion and where we got last time was talking about um, the organs in the digestive system. So we got to talking about the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, etc. All the organs involved in the digestive process. And we also briefly mentioned these at the top which are the salivary glands just up here. And these are useful in, um, en in the discussion about enzymes. So there are three major groups of enzymes that you need to know about. Uh, one is amylase, protease and lipase. Now you might hear the word carbohydrase in discussion about amylases. Amylase is a um, essentially a type of carbohydrase, one that breaks down carbohydrates. So we need to know their names and we need to know what food types they break down. So let's start with amylase. That breaks down starch into sugars. This is why you, when you chew on a piece of white bread it will start to taste sweet because the amylase breaks down starch into sugars. Protease breaks down proteins into amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. And lipase breaks down fats into two things, this time fatty acids and glycerol. So when you eat food and it goes down your digestive system not only will it be churned by stomach muscles, um, it will also be broken down by enzymes as well. There are a few organs or glands involved in producing enzymes, and that is the salivary glands, the stomach, which is an organ, pancreas is another gland, and the small intestine, which is an organ. Um, but not all of these organs produce all of the enzymes. For example, the salivary glands at the top, they produce amylase. So
So the breakdown of starch starts right away when you start eating food um, in your mouth. The stomach produces protease. So the proteins in the food that you're eating are starting to be broken down in the stomach. Not all of the proteins would be broken down there, but the process will start there. The pancreas, if you remember, the food doesn't go through the pancreas, it's just a gland, but it will produce all three, amylase, protease and lipase, and it can feed those into um, the small intestines, which you can see closely sort of linked up over here. And finally, the small intestines also produce all three, amylase, protease and lipase. So if you look at this half of the digestive system, just think about it that all of them are produced. So from the pancreas down, in the pancreas and the small intestine, all three of those enzymes are produced. And we need to know these specific ones as well, that amylase is produced in the salivary glands as well, and protease is produced in the stomach as well. Now there are very different conditions in the stomach to the small intestine. The stomach is acidic and the small intestine is alkaline. We said earlier that enzymes like specific conditions and different enzymes like different pHs. So the proteases that are working in the stomach like acidic conditions, whereas the proteases in the small intestine like alkaline conditions as do the amylase and lipase that are working in there as well. So there are different types of proteases, some for acidic conditions and others alkaline conditions. Now if your food is travelling from your stomach here where it's acidic into your small intestine then there's going to be a little bit of a problem for the enzymes in here if you carry all that acid through. Now from the last video we introduced the word bile which we said was store, was um, produced in the liver and stored in this gallbladder here. And it is the bile that does two things. First of all, it neutralizes that acid, so it gets put in here, as you can see, just into the small intestine, neutralizes the acid, making the conditions nice and alkaline for um, the enzymes in the um, small intestine. And it also emulsifies fats. Um, what emulsifies mean is it just breaks the fats down into little globlets that are easier to um, be digested. So that bile is really important going in there. So there's a lot here to remember about enzymes. Um, it's worth writing some important bits down, perhaps putting them on post-it notes around your house to try and remember. You need to remember what food groups are broken down and what's made and you need to remember where all of these enzymes are produced and where they're working as well as the conditions that they like and the role of bile in the digestion process. If you found this video useful then please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe to watch further videos.